few are presented with an opportunity to seize greatness. In beautiful Southern California, the PGF Championships introduce that opportunity of a lifetime. It's North America's best of the best. It's a celebration of the sport, and a champion is crowned now. Pierre, albeit rare, is incredibly special because the Lady Magic, they win it all. They're the PGF 2022 12U National Champs. So let's do it again in Southern California. Let's celebrate the sport and do so at the 12U age group from the beautiful bays upon the Pacific to Deanna Manning Stadium. Bill Barber Park, we're in Irvine, California. This is the 12U Premier Division Premier Girls Fast Pitch National Championship, the AZ Storm National Squad. Chuck Kobasu, their head coach, the Bengals CKM, Paul Caffrey, their leader. Oh, what a matchup we have and what a what a great analyst we have. We always learn from Amanda Freed, Olympic gold medalist and a national champion. My name is Darren Sutton. Welcome back to the ballpark. This age group, kind of the bump in development. We just talked about the 10 U's and wrapped up a wonderful title game. But now when we get to, to 12 U, the athletes are getting a little bit bigger, taller, stronger, and a true growth age at 12 U. Yeah, I love this age because we saw the 10 U. We saw the fundamentals that were being developed. And this 12 U is really where they have a chance to put that all, all that hard work on the field, on play, in this championship game. Both of these teams so talented, so competitive, and it's going to be a good one. Let's meet the starting lineup for the AZ Storm. Take it away. Hi, my name is Sydney Root, and I'm reading the lineup to Arizona Storm National. Starting off, Millie Mendez. Next, Sophia Saldivar. Koa Jones. Sydney Root. Riley Kobasu. Taylor Falquez. Bella Mora. Boogie Stell, Lyndon McRoberts, Taylor Phillips, and Alicia Benitez. Well done, Sydney Root. Well done. Excellent job as we fly high. Beautiful drone shot. That's an actual current shot. It's so pretty. And this ballpark is pretty on its own. So let's get to work and introduce some of these athletes as you see them for the very first time at the 12U age group. Emily Yoon is in the circle. Briggs Softball Club. BSC and these Bengals, BSC Bengals, the Briggs family doing such a great job with their club and they have earned the right to be here. It's Caffrey, it's Martin, it's Kearney, it's Vega, Renteria, Yi. Yoon is in the circle. Lindauer is at first, Corona. Eliana Corona does the catching behind the plate. And you heard the names for the AZ Storm and understanding who they are. And Billy Mendez is at the very top of the order. Great job on the introductions, by the way. And again, as we talked about, kind of the, the growth age, if you will. Millie leads it off. It's an Inca Elementary. Amelia, her given name. Miliana. And Millie is the nickname that she bears. She is from beautiful Buckeye, Arizona. A lot of these athletes from either the Phoenix area, somewhere in the outskirts of Phoenix AZ. Buckeye in that same spot. Love to go to UCLA, as you saw, or OU at Inca Elementary. Millie is a rising seventh grader. Let's play for a championship out of Southern California. The Bengals, BSC, Briggs Softball Club against the AZ Storm in the black and white uniforms. And away we go in the first pitch. Just misses outside, 1-0 and oh, the count. Well, this is Yoon in the circle's third consecutive PGF National Championship game. She's had a great tournament so far and feels right at home at this stadium. Pretty pitch. It's the outside corner. Stuff-wise, what are we going to see with Emily? Well, I think we're going to see a little bit more development than we did at the 10 years. So we saw a lot of outside. Emily's going to go inside, outside. She's already shown us that Screwball paints the outside corner really well. Mix in a little off speed. Yeah, she won the Platinum last year with the Athletics Mercado. EY won the Premier with the Ohana Tigers. She was interviewed by Amanda Freed, she tells, as the winning pitcher of that game. Right there in her notes, she remembers <laughs> talking to you. This she said, although Freed, she said, I was much more baby-faced and without braces at that point. <laughs> I believe we should get a split screen of today and <laughs> then. So I believe it. 
That's wonderful. This is a Gates student with straight A's working in the circle. Lift it to the left side, and it's a base hit. Boy, pretty approach, and Millie Mendez is on with the single. Millie ready to roll. Stayed determined with her approach and is rewarded. And a good at bat to lead this game off. Another screwball outside corner. We're seeing a lot of these athletes put their toes on that chalk line so they can cover that entire outside part of the plate and then some. Tony and Amanda, the parents of Sofia Saldivar, she pops up a bunt racing up the line. Double zero will come back and do it again. Her siblings Manuel, Julissa, Julian, and Mary Bella. Julian and Marabella, her youngest siblings, just two and one. So I'm guessing she has to maybe roll up her sleeves and help on occasion around the house with mom and dad, Amanda and Tony. Pushes that bunt right out in front of the plate. And moving the runner in the scoring position, a clean sacrifice bunt for Saldivar. Mendez in the scoring position. The fundamentals are key, shows the bunt very early. The barrel is out in front. She just catches the ball perfectly placed down in the dirt. Koa Jones. Tokoa, her given name, from Chandler, Arizona. That one just missed off the plate with the screwball that time. Jones would love to go to Oklahoma or Texas, as you saw in the graphic. He's a rising eighth grader at Akimel Al Middle School. Bridget and Terry, her parents. Both played competitive softball. Rolled foul, very proud of her heritage. As a matter of fact, both her parents not only played competitive softball, but they both played in the Native American World Series and won the championship four times in a row, both mom and dad. Wow. This athlete, as she digs back in, plays volleyball, plays basketball, and of course, this sport. Pretty close to that chuck line in the batter's box. That one missed outside, good take. Now that pitch before, I really liked it. It was inside. We haven't seen a ton of hard inside pitches no. to the lefties with their toes on the line. And it was an uncomfortable swing. It was a foul ball, but I'd like to see that more as this game goes on. Jam those hitters inside, make them move off the plate a little more. The pitcher's got to be able to be more comfortable with the pitches on both sides of the plate. Two and one the count. Lifted left field. Hangs up nicely in the play made out there by the left fielder McKenna Caffrey. Emily Yoon, who works in the circle, the maturity that we shared in her answer, remembering being interviewed by you. She had some pretty clear and clean thoughts on her team that I'll share with you probably when she works in the circle next inning. She's quite aware of her surroundings as a teammate and what her team has accomplished. It's pretty cool. We heard Sydney Root do the starting lineup a minute ago. The right fielder, number 11 on that jersey, takes her chances now. Rutt is from Phoenix, Arizona, is at St. John Bosco Catholic School. Class of 2028. Right down the middle, runner heading to third. That throw trickles away. There's a, a wild pitch away from a run now. Stolen base, Millie. The throw was errant, slipped through. And let's see if there was an effort made to get out of the way. Now that's why that tough that play is so tough and why it works a lot is you show that bunt, the corners crash in. Now it's a foot race between the shortstop, Rancheria, and the base runner. And as a catcher, you've got to clear the way and make a lane because as a hitter, you have priority in the box. That's your box. As long as you stay in it, don't make an attempt to get in the way, you're fine. Yeah, she stood still, statuesque, if you will, held that back close to her helmet. Exactly right, clearing, that's the perfect description for Corona. Yeah. One and two, the count. 
to Rutt. Rutt would love to go to Duke. She'd love to go to Washington if given the opportunity. A couple of places she's thought about as a 12-year-old. Sam and Terry, her parents. Mom and dad, both college basketball players. Curve ball, good take. If you watch Sierra Daniel play, the LSU recruit in the PGF All-American game, that, the AZ Storm alum now, is who Sydney looks up to a ton. Had a chance to work out with her. Dad Peter, the team speed and agility coach. Oh, what a changeup. Wow, just what the doctor ordered that time. Curveball away, change up in. She was a handful. A pitcher who's been here, who's done that, and wants to do it again. These Bengals, such a great group as they have pieced together, finding their journey one and all and finding it to the championship game. Briggs Softball Club Bengals, let's meet them. Hi, my name is Eliana Cronin, and I'll be introducing the lineup to the BSC Bengals. First up, we have Erica Martin. Second is Emily Yoon. Third is me, Eliana Corona. Fourth is Jules Vega. Fifth is Kaylin Yee. Sixth is Janelle Monzon. Seven is Quinn Kearney. Eighth is McKenna Caffrey. Ninth is Hazel Renteria. And the flex is Emma Lindauer. Good stuff, great introduction. We appreciate that. This is a, a unique team as we've talked about. Uh, Linda McRoberts goes to work in the circle for the storm. McRoberts is a Phoenix area resident. Sonoran Trails Middle School is where she goes. And she would love to be a Duke Blue Devil someday. Robbie and Jen, her parents. As that one is fouled off, Erica Martin leading things off. Baby E from Yorba Linda, California. Yorba Linda Middle School, a rising seventh grader. It's him in Oklahoma State, Notre Dame, or Long Beach State as well. One of the few players on this team that doesn't aspire to go to UCLA. <laughs> I was sharing, Amanda and I were going through the notes this week of these athletes as we've gotten to know them and understanding that, you know, this is her team. They all should be sending you emails and notes. <laughs> I know, right? Rolls on a hop, out toward first. A couple of steps to the bag. Kobasu is there, the first baseman. Riley turned that into an out. Riley is flanked by Saldivar next to her. Jones at short, Phillips is at third. The outfield left to right goes Mendez, Valquez, Rutt, and Stell behind home plate. Emily Yoon. Not only does she work in the circle, win championships, but she also hits for herself. She went right to work, right back through the middle of the diamond. That ends up being a 1-5-3. And a nice job by Phillip just quickly jumping on that one and throwing accurately. Yeah, and if McRoberts doesn't get her glove on this, that ball might be up the middle, but a good job of deflecting it over to the third baseman, Phillip, who finds it, grabs it, and gets it across the diamond. Ellie Corona from Whittier, California. Ellie takes a change up and misses high and inside. 1-0 and oh the count. There you go, there's that UCLA on the list. St. Bruno School, eighth grader. She's a catcher and a third baseman. Today she catches. On a line in the center field. I'm gonna tell you this, Free. those are a couple of really good passes at the softball back to back. Yoon and now Corona, Corona gets rewarded. That's a real confident swing by the Bengals. Look at this approach. That ball down in the zone, right back up the middle. We've seen a couple up the middle. This one hit on a line. Get the Bengals first base hit of the game. Jules Vega from Orange, California. That's just a few minutes from here. She's the third baseman today. She can certainly help in the circle when called upon. Portola Middle School. That school ball misses in. 1-0 and oh, the count to Jules. Juan and Sandra, her parents. And she's the middle child. Destiny, her older sis, is 20. And Ari, younger sis, 7. 
All that Bengals gear around on the third base side, the dads, the moms, the coaches. The athletes certainly have their own style, but in support of these Bengals, it looks like all these parents went to the NFL shop to grab their cool Bengals gear. Love it. The 2-0. 3-0 the count to Vega. Runner moves up as that one well read by Corona. The moment that one went into the dirt, Steele tried to keep it with her, did, but just kicked far enough away. Especially when you have a pitcher in the circle who's going to throw quite a few off-speed pitches. This one's slow and in the dirt. So as soon as you can read that, a little hesitation just to pick it up and then off to the races it was a great read. Three and one the count. Vegas favorite drills, if we were to just leave her with one, she said, I like to keep it simple, tee drills to zone into my bat and give me a tee, give me a bucket of softballs and I can work. That one is high. And a throw down back behind the runner. That had the look of a three ball pitch out, I'm, I'm curious but maybe that was the choice. They just didn't want to waste any more pitches. Well, I think with a runner in scoring position also, Vega's had a really hot stick. She's got a ton of power, so I think this is twofold, not giving her anything to get her barrel on, and then, hey, if you can back pick a runner, why not? Kaylin Yi takes a pitch off the plate, but it grabs the corner just enough from Fullerton, California. Would love to go to UCLA or Air Force. Jung Yi is her dad, Monica Yi is mom. And her older brother, Noah, her bodyguard, if you will, 17 years old. Yi down off the end of the bat, dumps it into left field. Just past the outstretched glove of George, and a run will score. Well placed softball, Kalen gets it done. With two outs, just knowing where she wants to put the ball. Not the hardest line drive, but does the job. Just perfectly placed, shallow left field outside the reach of Jones at shortstop. And with two outs, runners are on the move. And the Bengals score run. The pride of La Habra, California is J. Bob, Janelle Monzon. She's at Washington Middle School. This left fielder, right fielder, is a DP in today's game. Her mom is Jennifer. Sisters are Violet and Melody, and brothers are Vincent and Daniel. Mom played for a long time this sport. As that one floats high. She's talking about her mom's journey. This hitter is a softball player. All the way till she was 18, played All-Stars, traveled ball. Life happens, she said, though. Her exact quote is that's the strike she said, but life happens and she was unable mom to play in college. This is a power lefty hitter. Calls herself an RBI machine when she's right. Cherishes clutch situations. Now this is one of those. Janelle pretty close to that line in the batter's box. Fouls that one off. Well, she's thinking she's getting another good pitch here. Just want to be on time. She's a gap-to-gap -gap hitter, and there are some pretty big gaps out there in the outfield, right center and left center. Pitch away, a screwball. She was looking in, thought she might lean on one. And so she turned it over with some teeth. Screwball with effect. Through one, one nothing. The AZ Storm looking to get things going. They're trailing by a score of one to nothing. These tournaments from pool play all the way into bracket play. And look what they had to do to bounce their way out, if you will, of the loser's bracket, and they did just that. Excellent job, a couple of 
must wins against the Beverly Bandits who had beaten them before. That's a tough road. You want to go as deep as you can in the winner's bracket. If you're going to get a loss, you want it to be as late as possible. But even then, it's still a tough climb out. Kobasu, the head coach of this team, as that one is rolled foul. Riley, his daughter, Kobasu, hitting now. Chuck played a dozen years in the NHL. He had a really, really good career at the highest level of the sport. Canadian by birth, from British Columbia, from Vancouver. Played at Boston College, and then went on to play for a long, long time. Right winger. Calgary, Boston, Minnesota. Colorado, Pittsburgh had a career that didn't end too long ago, 2014, less than a decade ago. 15 career goals, make it 34, a shorter to 22-1 season for the Bruins. That changeup never got there. Chuck, wife Chrissy, and Riley as well, along with their sibling Shay, who is 14, make their home in Scottsdale. In Arizona, she goes down. Wicked stuff from you, and that's back-to-back -back strikeouts going back to the first inning. Yeah, this is just a nasty curveball. Paints the outside corner and then breaks a little at the last minute. Really good job of setting it up with that outside, or the changeup, I should say. Going to the outside. Taylor Falquez. Falquez from Queen, Queen Creek, Arizona. Stands up. He's at Newell Barney Junior High School. She'd love to go to Oklahoma or Oregon. Missed some time this summer. Was tough. She's thrilled to be back. Just about six weeks with a fractured growth plate in her knee. She said, I've learned, and this is not going to be a surprise, not to take a, a single moment on the field for granted. Well, here she is in the title game. Dad is an assistant coach, Gilbert, for this team. Mom is Christy. Changed up on her. So tough. That pitch is way slower than the hard stuff. So you almost have to, you overthink it because you see it out front, you wait back, you try to wait, and then it's even slower. <laughs> you can see the buckle in the knee. Ready for it. But so was Jules Vega. Lined right to the third baseman, Vega. After the changeup, this. Having just got her on the handle, that's what a changeup does. It makes it just a little slower, not able to get that barrel through. So really nice complimenting pitches. Bella Mora from Surprise, Arizona. The DP, she certainly is a key catcher for this team as well. Ball, strike one. Samantha, Samuel, or mom and dad. Two time CAA state champion for her school team. Down off the end of the bat. Well, that one dies right behind the second base bag. It's almost as if she underhand lopped it to the perfect spot. She'll take it though. That's a single for Mora. I think a ball that. BSC will tell you the Bengals probably should have been caught. Yeah, I definitely think that this ball should have been caught. It looks like maybe a little miscommunication. You could see Renteria at shortstop take an eye, a peek over at Yi. I don't know if Yi called that, but it was a long way for both of them to go. Jaden Stell, the Phoenician at Blue Horizon, her school. She's an eighth grader. Owen oh, won the count. Alabama's her dream school. She'd like to study medicine, hopes to be a doctor someday. Didn't mean to. Rolls it out to short, and they turn and go the short way. A little awkward when it came together, but Renteria to Yee turned into an out quite easily. 12U Premier Division National Title Game, 1-0.
These BSC Bengals, their road to the title game, and they're leading in the title game of the 12 U age group by a score of one to nothing. As we get back to the action, they look to pitch on to the board right about now, Quinn Kearney. And it's been nearly perfect having not to dig out of the loser's bracket. Finally, for the first time, giving up a single run, make it three, but it was shut out softball prior to that. Those are some tough teams I agree. to have to face also, giving impact right out of the gates. A couple of close ball games, and you feel like after you get over those, it's smooth sailing, but every team in this tournament is a tough one. It takes a lot to get here. Got an in-between swing, runs the count to one and two, Quinn Kearney. Kearney, rising eighth grader, had a 4.0 GPA all three trimesters through middle school. A really good student, has not missed a beat. Away, just stayed stubborn away. Almost looked like a little unique curveball spin to it. That's a great location for that pitch. Now batting, left fielder, number 21, McKenna Caffrey. Yeah. McKenna Caffrey. And for her dad, Paul, her mom is Cindy. Goes the other way. That's a fair ball off the yeah. bag. Like a speed bump, it goes into left field. She let it travel, travel, then exploded. Waits back really nice on this first pitch, sees the outside part, and goes with it right off the third base bag. That was by Phillip real fast. I think had that not hit the bag, that might have had a chance to roll deep into left. You're exactly right, I think a break, because that was really hard hit. Hazel Renteria. Little play on words presents us with her nickname, as you can see, Hazel Basil. <laughs> Tried to do the same thing to Hazel Basil from Maywood, California. Rising eighth grader at Mesa School. Yasmin and Andrew, her parents. She is a big fan of Houston Astros on the baseball side, second baseman, Jose Altuve. That's her favorite player. She's a middle infielder like Altuve. And she says, and I quote, Jose's inspired me because he showed me very clearly size doesn't matter when you stand in the infield, when you stand in the outfield in any sport. Altuve may be what, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, hitting homers in the majors, winning MVPs. Hazel takes it down that third base line again. Not in time. Phillip made the choice to fire toward the second base area. So Villa was there covering, but just not in time. There's a break for BSC, the Bengals. Now you got speed on the base paths and at the plate, so you've got to make a decision. And this ball just wasn't hit hard enough to beat the speed that Caffrey has on first base. She slides in safely. And that allows Hazel to be safe as well. Baby E, Erica Martin, rounded out to the first baseman back in the first inning. Erica Martin. Let's go E! That yeah, would have been the second out of the inning if she just fired it across the diamond. That out was there for her. This is a off the field, Erica Martin, a unique athlete. We know she can run on the field, but she's an excellent rollerblader. To me, that takes some athleticism, jumping, spinning, doing tricks on her rollerblades. My ankles are sore just thinking about it. <laughs> She lives in a home where I think they are really good cooks. That's lined in the center field. It's down for a base hit. 
Bases are loaded. Dare I say exit velocity. That one hit hard off the bat of Martin. Give a listen. Bakhtes did a nice job keeping that in front of her. Yeah, because I thought she had a chance at it, and I think she did also, and that's what you have to do, keep your body in front of it. So if you do go for that dive, you knock it down, and because she does that, no run score. One and oh, the count to Emily Yoon. EY, they call her. She can play first, second, work in the outfield. Today, she's in the circle. Kramer Middle School with the bases full out in front of her. Emily was saying we have a new team of castoffs and no names before the season. And the beginning wasn't great. We started 19 and 9, got eliminated a couple of times in the first round of tournaments. As the summer went on, our doubts started to go away. She said, then the girls started to get to know each other, like really know each other. And then we gel. Coaches adapted. And since the beginning of December, this team turned it around, went 81 and 8. And then finally yesterday, this team's 100th win collectively together. These are the words of Emily Yoon, like a scouting report she shares. The 3 0, 3 and 1 the count. She wraps her thoughts on her team by saying, what I learned is misfit toys can fit together to make a good team. A good team can challenge great talent. Softball can even be more fun and rewarding playing alongside your friends and trusting each other. She rolls that one out towards short. It's bottled, recovered, on in time for the out. The thought the whole time as she charged for Jones, I'm going home, I'm going home. But when it took a tough hop, good for her recovering and getting the out at first, a run to score. Yeah, it's easy to panic after this happens and just hold the ball and continue with bases loaded. Instead, recovers and gets that out. Eliana Corona. Pretty deep thoughts from you and on her team, huh? Yeah. But it's so true about the camaraderie and the trust, and that's what happens when you build new teams and new girls come together, new families come together. And it takes a while to figure each other out and to develop that trust, but you can really turn the corner once that happens. She even spoke kind of about the size of some of the athletes, which we've heard the athletes themselves talk about when she did say, and I left it out just for the sake of storytelling. The actual line was, a good team, parentheses, even when small and unintimidating, can challenge great talent. It's pretty deep, Emily. I need you to, to write for me some more. <laughs> Vividly recalling being interviewed by you. Corona singled and scored back in the first inning. I'm told we may have gone into the archives as she jostled our memory, and we may have that. The baby face interview? Yes. Beautiful change of face. Being interviewed by softball's Larry King. I mean, you, you'll get her going. <laughs> Really ask the tough questions. Do I though? No. You're very kind. <laughs> you're very kind. You're celebrating with them when you're down on the field doing those interviews. I need to urge you though to, to really kind of facilitate more tears. That's that's really an area I need to work on. <laughs> Three and two the count. We captured a lot last week because of the coaches, but also because it was the end. That one belted toward left field. That one is down all the way to the wall. Ileana Corona on her way to third with the slide and a triple. That softball was crushed. And once it came off the bat, you knew this was trouble. Going into the gap, deep left center field, she just got all of this pitch. I love that sound. Couple hops to hit the fence, clears the bases, she gets herself a triple. Sid 
Sydney Root grabs the softball, comes on into the circle, and Sydney will take over. We'll reset. That means we'll need a new right fielder. But for now, Root takes over. Bring her home, Joe. Bring her home, baby. For the Arizona Storm National. And the score is four to nothing. Alicia Benitez is the new right fielder. Sadie Wise is running at first. All right, check that third. That was a triple, folks. Benitez out there, Alicia, number four on that jersey. Alicia. Ready to roll as her right fielder comes in now, is in the circle. She first will deal with Jules Vega. Here's Jules Vega. Vega bounces it. Back behind the second base bag, comes short, the throw is wild. What a great effort, by the way, ranging to get there by Koa Jones. No miscue because the runner didn't advance, the run would have scored, so just an infield single and an RBI, and it's five to nothing. And that would have been a phenomenal play. I mean, she had to go a long way, Jones did, back behind second base to grab that. I love the effort. Kaylin Yee deadens one out in front of the plate, and a nice job coming in to cover second base by Sofia Saldivar. Eliana Corona rushed the softball. All sorts of hits in front of her as well. McCaffrey, Martin, Corona, bang, it's five to nothing. Oh, you flex it. Emily Yoon is such a talented athlete, and she's been here before the opportunity to play at a very high level, winning championships. It was a couple of years back that she, after winning a PGF title, was interviewed by my partner. Let's go back in time. Emily, congratulations. You guys were phenomenal. You pitched a beautiful game. I need to know your emotions, the way that you were feeling before you stepped in the circle today. Uh, before I stepped in the circle, I was really nervous, and I was also really excited to finally play in BGF in the championship. Well, you guys did an amazing job. I know it was a really, really hard-fought week. You were up late last night and got up early this morning. How proud are you of your team's journey to get to today and then to perform the way that you did? I'm really happy for them. They made plays behind me, and they are really good for the whole weekend. <laughs> You guys did a phenomenal job. Congratulations. Go celebrate your team with your team. You're the national championships, they're the national champions at the 10U level. Congratulations. Go celebrate. What a memory. And there's the tears in the stands. You got somebody to cry that time as that one's <laughs> rolled out towards short. Nice play from the shortstop division. Hazel Renteria. How fun was that to look back? Oh my gosh, how little is she? That just goes to show like how much these athletes grow over, that was what, two years ago? Yes. Over that period of time, it's unbelievable. 10 you with the Ohana Tigers, EY. At the 8U age group, pitched in district, state, national, regional championship games. Pretty pitch, the screwball misses just off the plate. There you go. Oh my goodness. Same athlete. Maybe we'll throw another one up there in a couple years. Good pitch, extended the corner just a little bit. Yeah, I think we may be throwing one up there at a Power Five conference someday too if she continues to evolve. Stay back on a changeup, pops it up. Ranging back to make the play over there. Renteria again, Hazel. Two outs in the inning. Kudos to our production team. Best in the business, Steve Banta out there finding all the great archives. 
Saldivar. My partner in so many projects. Sophia Saldivar. That's where I met Steve, actually, right here at this event. I feel like it was like in 1972. <laughs> Pretty pitch up and away to Sophia. We're very proud of our team that Dan Hay allows John Walsh to assemble because we're as good as any out there. Not just for this sport, but for any event that comes together for any sport. They spoil us, don't they, Amanda? Oh, this is just, this is the best. And it's so fun seeing everybody year after year come back together for this event, and everybody wants to be here. We all look forward to it. Down off the end of the bat, not an easy play, unable to make it. Perfect spot, how about this hustle double? Right there in front of her. That'll give your dugout, your bench, a kick start. Especially with two outs, maybe scratch a run or two with two outs. Yeah, and it's things like this that really turn the page for your team. Good heads up base running. This is a routine ball that falls. It's the attempt to pick it up with the glove that kicks it around a little more, but great eyes on the ball the entire time. Doesn't break stride, uses her speed to get into second. Like both these teams are different uniforms. The orange with the daisies for the BSC, Paul Caffrey coach team, the Bengals representing that Bengal orange. And I like kind of the traditional, almost no nonsense, cool look that the storm has. And as a broadcaster, those jersey numbers on the back of the storm jerseys, how many times have I called a college event where you're not even sure what the number is? You can see for the storm, that is number 24, Koa Jones. And if you're making notes about an athlete and you're here scouting possibly, you want to be able to see the number. All you amazing coaches out there at the D1 level, we know you have incredible sporting goods deals with your different providers, but white on white doesn't work. It really doesn't help us scout or broadcast your players. It's cool. Sorry, I got on my so soapbox box. for a minute there. <laughs> Please forgive me, everyone out there listening. Let's get back to it. Focus on these athletes. But I do like the uh, the Briggs Softball Club, the Bengals uniform, especially the Daisy ad. Elevated pitch popped up. Easy chance right by the bag at second base. Caitlin Yee puts it away. That double by Saldivar, but the momentum was squashed. The Bengals lead it five to nothing. 12U title game. What a celebration of the sport. The opening ceremonies where you ratchet up your passion, your energy, you learn from great athletes like Jordy Ball. Nobody does this like PGF Amanda. I love this event. It's just a party in the park. It's in Central Park, Huntington Beach, a beautiful location. It's right behind the sports complex. There's vendors, there's food trucks, there's entertainment. There's Jordy Ball and other stars <laughs> of the game signing autographs. Roller to the right side. Played right at the belt. Saldivar, who had doubled in the last inning. That's Janelle Monzon goes down. Start things off on a 4-3 ground down. Here in the bottom half of inning number three. Quinn Kearney. Strong arm in the outfield. We'll see her flex that at some point, I'm sure. Just got a piece of that one. In the classroom, Quinn is passionate about math. Straightforward. Doesn't really involve feelings, so a logical human being. Favorite teacher, seventh grade math teacher. This is Fikej. Structure classroom, she said. She can relate to me. I like structure. They're gonna miss. Down she goes. Also her volleyball coach, so a big impact there. That's a nice bounce back in the circle for Root. Yeah, some down spin, well placed on the outside corner. Now batting, left fielder, number 21, McKenna Caffrey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kenna Caffrey. 
Lifts that one, shallow left. The center fielder cutting on across. Valdez is there to make the play. Ends up leaving her feet. That's a quick one, two, three inning. And if you're the storm, maybe you've created some momentum. Paul Caffrey is the coach of the Bengals. They have a five to nothing lead in this the championship game. Paul, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Speak to the character of this team, kind of some of the characteristics that they've shown you over the last week in this event. You know, uh, all year they've just been, they're, they're a team that fights to the very end. Uh, we're not going to wow you with our athleticism or our, our physical specimen. We're not uh, big and strong like some of these other teams we face, but uh, we lean on our, hard on our pitchers, and uh, they've gotten us to this point all year, and we just play sound softball from, from top to bottom, so I'm really proud of them. I thought Emily Yoon, kind of mindful in her response, talking about this team and her teammates said, look, I've learned that, and these are he, her words, that misfit toys can come together as long as we all trust one another. Um, I thought that was a pretty thoughtful answer with a ton of respect for her teammates. Yes, uh, it's, <laughs> and that says uh, a lot about her. But, yes, it's, we've definitely we got pieces from a lot of different teams. We just started, uh, we had about seven or eight girls from our previous team last year and, and came over to the Bengals this year and added pieces like Emily and, uh, you know, players from other teams that maybe weren't, uh, the headliners for that team, but have, right. have been fantastic for us. I want you to talk a little bit about a Corona. She's having a heck of a game. Um, talk about her approach to the plate. Yeah, no, she's uh, she's been our three hitter all year. You know, Eliana's been our mainstay, and she's been with me from uh, day one. An amazing kid, a great hard worker. Um, commands uh, home, uh, obviously behind the plate. She does an amazing job, but offensively, she's she's been our mainstay, and uh, we lean hard on her. And she produced again there. How about the Caffrey kid and left just a minute ago? <laughs> I just, I was Sorry, just, I paused because I, I was did. watching I did. that play I was play just about too. to yell, and I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, that, oh, uh, please. The, yeah. Hard no. skip the beat. It that did. Was a, it did. That was a heck of a play. Well, listen, thank you for allowing us to, to meet your team through your words, and your athletes did a great job telling their stories. We appreciate all their information, and, and best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate all you guys do for us. Yeah, really good stuff. Paul Caffrey and his, his squad. That was a heck of a play by McKenna. And we had him in a magical microphoned moment where he either could have hollered something encouraging. I don't know if there's anything discouraging to say as she keeps this one in front of her. And it's a base hit by Riley. Kobasu, another coach's daughter, picks up a hit. This ball scorched Amanda. I'm impressed with the way he just continued on with the interview. I couldn't even get my question out because <laughs> I was stunned by the play. But well done, coach. Composure, it's important. She's there for that play all day long. Taylor Falquez. We got a giggle out of coach on the Mid Misfit Toys quote. <laughs> That's a good quote. Well, I don't know if he laughed because it's creative from Emily or if maybe Emily has used a little coach speak in that answer. She might have heard <laughs> him say true. it before. It's very true. Embracing the humanity that they all bring together. Very cool, 2-0 oh, the count. These athletes have find, found the right spot here. They're at the highest level in the highest tournament at their age group. Right now, plenty of softball to play, but chasing a national championship up five to nothing. Three and one the count to Taylor. Scrappy player, good speed. Wants to pick up her teammates, does Taylor when they're down. And has learned how to move on from the stakes. That's a tough one at the 12 U age group. I think it's a tough one at the 25 U age group to move on <laughs> from right. the stakes. It's good at bad. All of a sudden, something's brewing. Yeah, the Storm team's got a lot of experience also. I know you mentioned their run in the Platinum Division last year as a first-year 12U team. So when we talk about the Platinum, we do talk about the opportunity to return that following year and have that premier berth. And to watch these teams kind of grow with that process is fun. It's fun to see year to year the learning that goes on and then being able to execute it back-to-back -back years on this championship stage is pretty special. Erica Martin came jogging in from center field. 
And it looked like we may see, I think that was Monzone who headed out the DP. Got that long flowing hair and a ponytail, couldn't see her number clearly. See, is she coming into pitch? We'll see what the strategy is now. Yoon is there. And it does look like heading into left field. That's exactly as we spotted. So the new left fielder is Monzon. Martin heading to the bullpen. Martin heads to the bullpen. As Caffrey moved to center, I believe that's what occurred. Strategy time in the title game. Fires one up and in. You're probably thinking, why all the hubbub? I plan on getting out of this mess. I was thinking the same thing. That fires me up as a pitcher when my coach sends, not in a bad way, but sends somebody into the bullpen. I think, you know, okay, nope, I'm going to stay in. I'm going to be here longer. You're not going to need her. Thank you for thinking of relieving me, but no thank you. Rolled out to third. How quickly can this go? The only play behind. I don't think, I mean, it was hit right to her. I don't think she had a chance if she goes to second then and they go to first, they have a double play. So not a bad decision. She got a shot at two there or no? I think she has a shot at two, but I agree. I would just go ahead and get that lead runner. Yeah, definitely a shot at two. Well, it's a second out to the inning. As Boogie, Jaden Stell will take her shot at things now. Floats a change up in there. Watch Yoon pitch as if to say to Erica Martin, go ahead and get your center fielder's glove and trot back behind me. I think it was the slow developing nature of all of it too that probably had her bubbling. Little edge to that rise ball, one and one the count. Stell grounded out back in the second inning. Going to get a chance to meet Chuck Kobasu, the head coach of the AZ Storm, learn about his team. Back to the screen it goes. State a goal of the Storm on their website to challenge and enhance the softball skills that are needed to compete at the highest level of amateur softball. They've got a, a deeper and deeper alumni that are going on to college too. That one sails high, two and two, the count. Great location, EY. You're almost there, Dave. All right, warmed up should she be needed, Erica Martin. Two and two, the count. Inside corner, screwball, that's strike three. Beautiful pitch, couple of runners stranded. Emily Yoon, go ahead and stop that whole warming up my reliever thing. As an Arizonan, I must admit, as we peek down, certainly have my eye on the storm, still make my home there, and as does their head coach, Chuck Kobasu. Chuck, thanks for spending time with us. What an incredible day you guys had yesterday just to earn the right to be here today. As you went to sleep last night, game planning what would go through today. How proud were you of their efforts yesterday? Uh, it was just awesome. They, I mean, they competed. I think we ended up playing 26 innings of one run ball, a bunch of them in international tiebreaker and uh, couldn't be prouder of them. And what's the message to your athletes as they come in and you're down by five, you need to score some runs, they know that, but what's that message to the girls to get them motivated and turn that corner offensively? You know, I think it's no matter how much we try to tell them to treat it like another game, it's almost impossible. I mean, the first couple innings, I could just see it. We weren't playing free. We looked like we settled in a little bit last inning, but uh, hopefully we can chip away here and uh, work our way back in it. What are you most proud of for this team beyond yesterday? As someone, you know, I was raised by someone who played sports like you at the very highest level my whole childhood. So you understand what they're going through in a way, but then again, it's new to them. What are you most proud of this team this summer? Oh, I mean, they just, they don't quit. They, uh, this is a sport of failure. They constantly fail in the sport and come back and keep fighting. I mean, yesterday we were down in a couple games and they didn't, uh, they didn't stop. It's not even a thought in their mind, I don't believe. And, uh, 
just a lot of fun to watch them. No biases welcome up in the booth, but as an Arizona, I'm very proud of what you guys have accomplished. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate you having me. The AZ Storm trailing five to nothing, and we thank Chuck for joining us. He just, you know, one at a time. He played in by hundreds of hockey games where he was down three goals, two goals, four goals. You know, and it starts with one. I mean, it really, that's the only way you can start it. And you keep putting up zeros. They made a nice play to start things in the first inning, but then that's fought off by Erica Martin. And look at the location of this pitch. It's running inside. She gets the hands inside the pitch, gets the barrel to the ball. It's a great piece of hitting to go right back up the middle. Love that shot. That's live of Emily Yoon. Look how close she is to the plate. Creating the Yoon swoon when you face her from the circle. Tough. Erica, you're running hard, babe. You're running hard. Down off the end of the bat. Oh, good effort. How much do you love seeing that? That's coach's daughter. Laying out down 5 nothing. That's not actually a, a soft bed of feather she's diving onto either. <laughs> no, that's a great effort on that ball. On that one. The Briggs Softball Club, the Bengals. And the work that this group has done. And that one is fouled back. Ken Briggs, Roseanne Briggs, those are the key names. I, I know you had some respectful things to say about those two. I do, I just love their commitment to the sport and they have daughters that play softball. So they get it, they understand it, they do it for the right reasons, they're competitive. Marlies Hornbuckle is their recruiting coordinator. Briggs Softball Club, Bengals, and they have teams at the 18U age group, 16U age group, down onto the, the 14, obviously. A lot of really solid teams. But the Bengals, snatched right out of the air. How about you? Sydney Root, Alinea right back through the right through the circle from Emily Yoon, squares this one up. Uh-uh, not this time. Let's get back in the dugout. PGF 12U Premier Division National Championship game as we move into the fifth inning. Amanda Freed, Darren Sutton, the production leader of this entire event, John Walsh, thank you for spending time with us, celebrating the best players in North America at this age group. Alicia gets an opportunity to go to work for those AZ Storms. She came on to play right field earlier in this game. Stayed back on that changeup. That one nearly took another turn. Yeah. They're called out for stepping, I'm assuming, yeah, over exactly right. in front of her on the plate. Oh, yeah. Number 42, Mary Mendez. You got to credit these umpires for being all over that. You got to watch the strike zone, the feet. They're doing a really nice job. Well, these last two weeks, Sean, Mike, David, and Steve doing an outstanding job. Most of these umpires, these first two weeks, these championship weeks are 
NCAA umpires, Division I, and love the opportunity to come out here. Reward for going the other way. Millie Mendez with a base hit. Goes with it real well. Vega's right on the line to flex off of her glove. Rising eighth grader at Crimson High School. That's where she will attend. How much does she look forward to playing the Saldivar for that Crimson team? She volunteered to be the team manager of the varsity team at Crimson High School. Chrisman High School, my apologies. As that is in there for a strike. Just wanted to be around the varsity, see how they handle their business, learn. Sounds like good parenting to me, too, to suggest that, you know? Something tells me there's an entire varsity team. It's summertime, so they're scattered. From Chrisman High School, since this was their manager, they know what she's doing today. I'm going to guess they're really proud of their team manager. How cool is that? Saldivar, who has played second base in a national championship game. Hits it hard, but foul. A lot of support from the older group for Briggs Softball Club. Let's go, you are you in the club, man? One out, girls, one out. So you talked about that family atmosphere that's created. That one is high. Sophia shared, something you might not know about me is I make delicious meals. I really bake well. And more importantly, I'm self-taught in crochet. I can make just about anything I want. Learn on a YouTube. YouTube can teach you anything. Outside corner, that strike three. Dotted the black of the plate. What a pitch by Emily. Wow, this is a really nice pitch. Just freezes Saldivar on the outside part of the plate with that curveball. Number 24, Cora Jones. Stay ready, Kate. Dakota Jones from Chandler. Pulls the hands in, rolls that one foul. Koa loves Jada Coleman, loves watching her play. You and I have had multiple really good interviews with her. That's uh, someone great to look up to. I interrupted you. No, not at all. I, I, that's somebody that you should take a lot of notes from, watch how she plays the game. But I was going to comment on Yoon going inside to these lefties. In the center field for a base hit. Yeah, continue your thought on that. We've it's been, not easy to do. Yeah, we've been talking so much about them crowding the plate, and not just on the Storm team, but across the board, athletes with their toes up on the line so tight to the plate. Unless the umpire is willing to expand way off the outside corner, you have to establish the in, and I like that Yoon is not shying away from going hard in tight, especially to those lefties, in order to set up that outside pitch. You know, we talked about it at the 10U age group, how challenging it was for some of the younger pitchers, and you get it, like, it makes sense. Shallow center, this time, beat goes on right on top of it. Able to haul that one in and make the play. Erica Martin back out there. Working behind Emily Yoon, five to nothing the score. One of the best young catchers in this region leads it off. Eliana Corona takes a pitch that is high, one and zero the count, and she's played like one of the best. In her action this afternoon, singled and scored in the first inning, and then tripled on a ball that honestly off the bat I didn't know how far it would go, but it went all the way to the wall. It really put up some. High popping numbers, uh, 438 on base percentage, nine home runs this season. If that one is just off the plate, help the 10U team win some USA tournaments along the way against some of the best in the country, also top 10 at PGF Nationals as well. 
Doesn't seem like a misfit toy to me. <laughs> Three and one the count. Liliana says something you might not know about me is I love to sing and dance to all types of music, especially Spanish music. Even though I still haven't learned how to speak it, I still love their music. Anything in Spanish suits me well as she draws a walk. Liliana is on. What a day, huh, in the title game? Yeah. Well, catch it. She's been real active on the base pads. These walks late in the game are important as well. Get base runners on, and it's been a few innings since the Bengals have been able to play to run. Ooh, I like that lane lineup card. Do you? I, I do. like that as well. I think you should ask Santa for one of those. I should. I mean, you could actually just watch your favorite team play softball or baseball and do that every game. It's right there in your family room while you watch games. You guys are big Angels fans, you could put it right there. It's a good teaching tool. Gotta get that Trout name played off the IL though and get it onto the field. <laughs> oh gosh, I know. Two zero popped up. Back of the bag at second base. Cole Jones ranges over. Elena Morales gets the call. Wonderful Bradley. opportunity for Elena. Number 13, Elena Morales. Let's go. Elena's from La Habra, California. Dreams like a lot of her teammates are going to UCLA someday. Middle infielder. Robert and Rosalind are her parents. Number 13. Lucky 13. Was an all-star at the 10U age group. Talented player, honor roll student. Who posts up every day. She said, I've never missed a day of school with the exception of that whole hybrid learning thing we had during the pandemic. I post up, I don't miss school. Bouncing ball, played back, hurrying up the line, throws high off the bag, and everybody's safe. So you get the call if you're Elena, you make contact and you get to reach. And she hustled hard up the line, a couple of hops over to third, and maybe a little rushed throw brings Kobasu off the bag. She's just not able to get down and back on it in time. But a good job of keeping it on the infield. Yeah, it's a great save on that throw. Janelle Monzon. The play out front hits the runner, square in the back. Inside the baseline, so everybody's safe. And doesn't feel so good, so. Eliana will go down to a knee for just a moment. That one squared her up. That's why it's important to create a throwing lane. to avoid that base runner. Ouch. That got Quinn, that's a run with just one out in the inning. Thank goodness she's all right. Runners move up. Get her in the mask. Quinn with an RBI the hard way. Oh boy. Here's what we heard and they heard. All right, a moment together in the circle for Root. Six to nothing is the score. We have to at least keep an eye on that number now as we play in the fifth inning. It is an eight after five run rule. I'll have to knock those runs in, but you got to think, Briggs Softball Club, these Bengals, head coach Paul Caffrey, you're eyeing that at this point. 
You you respect the team you're playing. You don't want them to play anymore. Still got to do it, though. Got to get the timely hits. And Root's been pretty darn good until this inning. Yeah, she has been good. And with the bases loaded, there's out options at any base. With that game-ending run standing on second base right now. Line drive, base hit left field. Everyone will move up one spot. Seven to nothing is the score. What a pretty swing by Kafka. Just meets the ball, gets on top of it, punches it right to the left side of the field. Really nice piece of hitting. Base is full. One single away from winning a title. As that one is low. Everyone drawn in tight, especially the outfield, looking to do everything they can to grab any out in the air that they can. There is just one out in the inning. Old first baseline, and that's a foul ball. You sell out to get that out at the plate, obviously. Yeah, anything soft in the dirt, especially towards second or short, will be a challenge to get that out at home. And obviously any semi-deep fly ball could lead to that run as well. There's no doubt if you're Sydney, it's simple. I'll take a strike out here, thank you very much. Paul Caffrey encourages his team from the Bengals dugout. Base hit left field. That will do it. It's a national championship. The Bengals, Briggs Softball Club Bengals are the 2023 PGF 12U Premier Division National Champs. And to the victors go the spoils and the hardware. Never have a group of misfit toys look so good together. What a performance by the Bengals from the pitching in the circle. Yoon, a phenomenal job of leading her team and then offensively getting the runs when they needed them, getting them in the five innings to end it with an eight nothing run rule championship. Eight to nothing final. Emily certainly pitched in in the circle. She was also very good. Had a fielder's choice in an RBI. She doesn't do it though without the offense and her battery mate, Eliana Corona. Corona was so good too. So between the two of them, that one two punch of pitcher, catcher, ironically, they both wear number one and number two. They were the team today. But then in the end, it steamrolled and was a team effort. Big hits by Yi, big hit by. Caffrey to end things. Renteria, it was just a fun team effort. And a great job by this AZ Store team. An incredible three win day yesterday. Every game was close. Every heartbreak moment they averted and pushed off. And maybe just today, maybe as is human, you run out of steam just a little bit. It's a lot to just get here. It is so much to get here. And this team has gotten here two consecutive years. So congratulations to the Storm for pulling that off and getting here to today with a phenomenal run through this PGF Championship week. You know, you get to that championship, that final game, and it's really anybody's game. And today the Bengals were able to create a little more momentum offensively, and then Yoon just didn't allow anything in the circle. Yeah, maybe we'll get a chance for you to interview her again <laughs> two years later. That would be all sorts of fun. Maybe we'll get a chance to hear from Emily Yoon. We saw Jacobusu as an Arizonan, kind of excited, kind of proud and uh, for what they were able to do, but really excited about what we saw with this Briggs softball club team. And you had so many positive things to say about them as well, knowing them very, very well. Emily Yoon gets that visor on and gets all set to chat with us down below. She's a champion. They don't do it without her. And she's two years removed from being interviewed by Amanda Freed and 
It's good to get together again, Emily. It's been a few years. Congratulations on your championship. How proud are you of your group of misfit toys that you played with and won together? I'm really proud of my all my team. I think they did such a great job this tournament. Well, Emily, we know that your coach came out, had a little conversation, and then we saw a pitcher going to the bullpen, your teammate, and then you just put your foot to the throttle. What were you feeling at the end of the game where you knew your team was so close to coming away with that championship? Well, I felt really frustrated at first, but I knew that I needed to get past that inning to help my teammates. So, yeah. yeah, it's a thrill. Bring your teammates in with you. Let them come stand around you. Wave them over. Tell them to come on into the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not beat you up, not beat you up. No, no, not oh, that no, much. Sorry, Emily, her. I didn't mean to have that happen. You okay, Emily? No. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no. Oh, my goodness, yes. I, I just wanted them to come stand with you. Emily, congratulations. <laughs> we're, we're thrilled to get to see you work again. We've called two of your championships now. Have a wonderful rest of your summer. You were amazing today, Emily. Congratulations. Great job, Emily. We really appreciated that. They 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 came in and tackled her. Yeah, that was. At least it's the end of the year, right? Yes. She's got some time to recover. <laughs> yes. How about that? The Bengals team, Briggs Softball Club. We celebrate them alongside Emily Yoon and her teammates, certainly, and all of those for my home state, the AZ Storm. Congratulations on your journey as well. This was an amazing game and what these have accomplished. But in the end, the sticks were too big and Emily was too good. And BSC, the Bengals were the champs. She's Amanda Freed, I'm Darren Sutton. He's John Walsh out in the truck. Dan Hay leads his PGF crew. We'll see you soon at the ballpark, the 14U title game coming up at 3.30 California Pacific time. See you then.